Welcome back to Paul's Tech News. Good news, everyone. We've made it to March 2024. And if you're following the advice that I give myself in my head, which I've never really stated out loud, so kudos for figuring it out, you've cleared as much calendar space as possible in the next two to three months so you can finally get some goddamned work done. No major hardware launches are on the horizon in the immediate future, so let's all focus on getting through those backlog projects we've been forced to put off for far too long. Like, wall mounting stuff on my set. Jeez, this place is in shambles. And I know it's hard to focus on work, what with the promise of approaching springtime and fresh air and flowers and stuff, or alternatively, the promise of a cave-like computer room and week-long recreational drug-fueled video game binges. But wherever your heart leads you as we coast towards the vernal equinox, thanks for letting your brain stop by my channel so you can keep yourself abreast of the past week's PC hardware tech news. Excellent. Today's video is brought to you by the Tower 300 series cases from Thermaltake, expanding their vertical tower design with a stunning new lineup available in a variety of colors. The larger frame now supports micro ATX motherboards as well as huge GPUs, including the RTX 4090, without compromising airflow thanks to an abundance of filtered ventilation panels. Two CT140 fans come pre-installed and the right side can house up to 420 millimeter AIO radiators. Finish your build off with a sold separately 3.9 inch LCD panel kit, or even go horizontal with a matching chassis stand for a truly unique look. For more on Thermaltake's The Tower 300 series cases, click the sponsor link in the video description. It seems fitting that AMD's launch of their latest GPU this week, the Radeon RX 7900 GRE, was met with what I would describe as the opposite of enthusiasm. Not hatred, but sort of an anemic fatigue that fittingly mirrored the Golden Rabbit Edition's mediocre 7 to 10% performance uplift versus the former go-to in this price range, the RX 7800 XT. It didn't help that the GRE already launched last year in July 2023, just only in China, so performance isn't even that much of a surprise or anything. It's just not really that big of a deal. It's like you just bought a 100-foot garden hose for $100 and the checkout guy says, hey, you know, we have a new 110 foot garden hose that just came out. The price, $110. But then he wants you to get excited about it too. And while sure, some of us wouldn't mind a bit of extra hose to play with, the increased length can get a bit unwieldy. Plus you've got to wipe it down between each use if you're taking good care of it. And what were we talking about again? Video cards. Yes, to be totally fair, the aforementioned RX 7800 XT was viewed positively in terms of value, even at 500 bucks. So hopefully AMD will do what they often do with Radeon GPUs, chip away at the GRE's price a bit at a time until it becomes a compelling value as well. Hopefully AMD will also chip away at some of the overclocking restrictions that seem to be holding the golden rabbit back, as there appears to be significant variance in the quality of review samples that went out, as well as frequency limitations that seem to limit peak potential, or as AMD calls it, a bug that they intend to fix. Steve from Hardware Unboxed posted one of the more critical 7900 GRE reviews when the secondary embargo lifted Monday, but he followed up with a retest video due to some backlash. To explain, Steve was one of the few reviewers who tested an OEM RX 7900 GRE last year when they were only available in China, and he went ahead and retested that same reference card for his video Monday. But the newer samples going around do seem to perform slightly better than the ones already on the market Market, and so he reran tests with the manufacturer overclocked Sapphire Nitro Plus and found that, yes, a card running at slightly higher frequencies will get slightly better test results, but it was still only a typical improvement of about two to five frames. What was more notable was AMD's communication with Steve indicating that, yes, they do see the current OC limits as a bug, so keep an eye out for them to fix the bug probably with an updated driver. And then perhaps the 7900 GRE can push its memory past about 2300 megahertz, or its GPU past about 2800 megahertz. And then maybe that extra length of hose will look a bit more appealing. Speaking of appealing lengths of hose, do you guys use liquid coolers? They can look quite nice. They quite often are excellent at cooling, but they do have downsides due to the possibility of pump failure. And of course, those prices, which can easily get up to $200 or even $300 for LCD enabled versions, which is why I typically recommend air coolers for all but the highest end builds. And air cooling has been on a bit of a tear recently, mostly thanks to Thermalrite, who keeps surpassing themselves with reasonably priced aftermarket offerings, first with the Peerless Assassin, then the Phantom 
Spirit, and now the Phantom Spirit Evo, a dual fan cooler that massacred the competition per Tom's Hardware's Albert Thomas in their recent review. This thing costs $43, and not only did it outperform or match $100 air coolers like Corsair's recent A115 or Noctua's NHD15S, it easily kept up with 360mm all-in-one liquid coolers, and quite a few of them when measuring average watts cooled while noise normalized. Now don't get me wrong, there's still very much a case to be made for liquid cooling with the high core count CPUs at the top of AMD's and Intel's current product stacks, but for anything below that, gaming PC builders will likely be much better served by one of Thermaltake's new air coolers. Your wallet will thank you too. Speaking of things that aren't worth the money, MSI's Claw handheld gaming device made some waves when it debuted at CES, but many onlookers were concerned when they found out that it was an all Intel device in terms of the CPU and the integrated GPU. And those concerns were borne out when early reviews started to pop up in mid-February, when compared to the ASUS ROG Ally, which is AMD Zen 4 and RDNA 3 based, performance seems to lag behind, with the Claw typically delivering 10 to 20% fewer frames per second. Nevertheless, the Claw appears to be headed towards a retail debut, with three variants planned and MSRPs between $700 and $800, a tough sell when the ROG Ally costs $600 to $700 bucks and the Steam Deck OLED is $550 to $650. The for sale date seems to be in flux though, with UK stores claiming maybe March 20th or maybe in April, while the official MSI Germany store already has them in stock and available to order. That's just German efficiency though. But if the price, specs, and presumed performance still have you scratching your head, consider that MSI might be bringing this to market with some strong encouragement <coughs> money <coughs> from Team Blue, since Intel would likely prefer that the burgeoning handheld market not be completely dominated by AMD. Let's quickly talk about AI, but this time let's focus on an actually useful PC hardware implementation of it, blocking ransomware attacks. Most ransomware, once deployed to typically works in the same way. Encrypt as much of the data on a PC or server as possible, and then force the victim to pay a ransom for the encryption key so the data can be recovered. To fight this, IBM is equipping its new SSDs with ransomware detecting AI, powered by their fourth generation flash core module technology. Rather than worrying about the system's compromised operating system, IBM's solution monitors data at the I.O. level on the drive, and IBM says it has no impact on performance. The Flash Core module feeds I.O. data to a machine learning model that determines what typical system usage looks like, which then allows it to detect anomalies indicative of the presence of ransomware. In testing, the solution was able to detect and shut down attacks within one minute, preventing further encryption of data on the drive. AI is everywhere now, and it can get a bit fatiguing to hear about it all the time, but it helps to be reminded that it's not just being used to make hot dogs hotter. I'm doing Tech Briefs Platinum, Joe. I mean, I'm assuming you're gonna make a super fancy intro for it, but if you don't, you can use a regular Tech Briefs intro, just like hue, hue shift it, so instead of that gold or whatever color it is, like it, it's more silver, or just don't do anything, it's fine. I, don't, I mean, it's okay. And now we segue into a very special show finale. Welcome to Tech Briefs Platinum. Please note that Tech Briefs Platinum is a premium tier offering and does require a paid membership. If you did not send me money yet, then you'll be redirected to a looping video of that hot dog getting hotter, which I hear is a fascinating thing to watch for poor people. Thanks for stopping by. Are they gone? What a relief. Now that only my most affluent viewers are still watching, at last I can relax and speak my mind without worrying about all those inconvenient things I have to skate around when certain demographics are also watching. But I know time is money, your time especially, so let's begin with a simply charming video posted this week by Nada from Tech Testers. She went and tested a bunch of different RTX 4080 Supers. Pretty impressive stack there. And I know, I know, you already have an RTX 4090. That goes without saying, but it can be so difficult to find the right gift for your butler or your dog, perhaps. And just because we're ungodly rich doesn't mean we shouldn't look for the best performing options available. And it turns out performance is really uh, just about the same between all of these cards, with acoustics and thermals being the main differentiators. And as expected, the most expensive card performed the best, the ROG Strix OC from Asus, proving once again that money can buy happiness and the best GPUs. Thank you so much, Nada my dear. Ta-ta. That's how rich people talk, right?
Speaking of the best GPUs, aren't you a bit bored of the RTX 4090? I mean, sure, it's the fastest by a big gap, but it's already almost a year and a half old, and I think they should at least come out with a better video card for rich people. And apparently they will. What a surprise, the RTX 5090, even though it's just a rumor from the internet, and it might be 70% faster than the RTX 4090. That's a big boost, but it's also a known fact that the RTX 4090 does not use the full-size Ada Lovelace die, and NVIDIA was maybe saving room for an RTX 4090 Ti or a Titan class card, but if rumors are true, that's not going to happen. And even as I predicted, the biggest and best GPUs from both NVIDIA and AMD might be getting allocated for AI GPU usage with the coming generations. And while I know that we all have the means to buy as many H100s as we want with our pocket change and the bills we've lost in our Italian leather sofas, we can't use those GPUs for gaming. I guess I was wrong about money buying happiness. But at least we can all cheer ourselves up with today's final story about helpless nine to fivers being forced back to the office to work their day jobs. <laughs> this time it's Rockstar who is calling their staff back with a Monday to Friday schedule, ostensibly to reel in leaks and potential data breaches as they grow nearer to launching Grand Theft Auto 6. But we know it's really because those poors can't be trusted to invest the maximum amount of their time and energy on a daily basis for the good and benefit of the company when they're lazing about at home. All for the best, I say. It's high time these developers and programmers learn the value of a hard day's work while they build a game about anarchically robbing and killing everyone and everything in your path in the frenzied pursuit of that which makes man truly noble. Money. I hope it launches soon. I really want to play. But there you have it, guys. Tech news for the week. And if you liked it, click that like button or leave me a comment down below. While you're down there, all the articles I talked about today are linked in the video's description if you're interested. And you can also check out my store at paulshardware.net for high quality merchandise, t-shirts, hoodies, beer sets, and more. Subscribing to my channel is always a good call too. Thanks again, everyone, and we'll see you next week.